So, so basically, what are scalars and vectors? Well, uh, they're both um, measurement. Anything, whenever you want to make a measurement of anything at all, um, then you you either the thing that you're going to be measuring is going to have a number, it's going to have a size. So if you say, I know how long is something, how tall is something, how heavy is something, how hot is something, whatever you do is going to have a number. But some of these measurements also have size. So a scalar, both of these have um, a size, or we can say magnitude, or size. Um, but this um, also has also has direction. I'm zoom in. So, what do I mean by that? Well, um, you can have um, let's think let's think of some examples then. Um, so, like some of the examples I just said. So, temperature. The temperature. Um, if something is twenty degrees, it's 20 degrees, you can't say it's 20 degrees forward or 20 degrees backwards or left or right. That doesn't make any sense. Whereas uh, you can do with some other things like, for example, um, it, um, force. The force, you know, you and, and it's important. It's like in the example that we just did a moment ago. If I just said there's a two Newton force and there's a three Newton force, what's the resultant force? You would have to know which direction is, each one is acting on to be able to add them together and give me the resultant force. Temperature, it's not like that. So there are, uh, force is the most um, sort of popular um, vector that we talk about, but um, there are others. There's um, acceleration. If you have, uh, so you can, so the way that we demonstrate that a vector is forwards is by saying it's positive and the way of saying it's backwards is by saying it's negative so we would do three minus two for these forces because the two is the opposite direction acceleration well if it's slowing down rather than speeding up we'd use a minus in that case too you can also there's also some things that in fact i'm going to move that down um i'm just i'm going to give another one which is called velocity which you may have heard of have you heard of velocity yes. It is. It's like speed, only it's a vector, where speed is a scalar. So uh, your speedometer on your car, um, well, that's just measuring speed. Um, but and, and it doesn't. The speedometer on your car doesn't tell you what direction you're traveling. It doesn't say you're going this much, this fast north or whatever. It just tells you how fast you're going. Um, whereas velocity, it would um, tell you how fast you're going. So. Uh, next one we'll look at is displacement. This one is uh, the one I want to study in a bit more detail in a moment, um, but it's often not known about. So displacement is the vector equivalent of distance. We have um, so some some vectors have some some scalars have a vector equivalent, or some vectors have a scalar equivalent. So again, distance. If I let's let's think of a mileometer now. If I travel, if I go on holiday. In fact, if I go on holiday and then drive back home again, my distance is quite long. I've used up a lot of petrol. My wheels have gone round and round quite a few times, and so my mileometer read, read quite a large number. Whereas my displacement is more like how far have you got from your original point, and that would be zero, because I've only because I'm actually back where I was. So we'll look at that one now to demonstrate that point, basically the point I've just said there. So if you imagine you have, if I, this is often a, an exercise I give my students. Um, in fact, I'll do it and then you, and then anybody watching this video, if you want to watch this video later on, you can actually do it yourself. So what I would say, I'd say, right, the man is, um, is going to walk five meters east then uh, 10 meters south. In fact, I will get you to do this, actually. 10 meters south, then um, 20 meters west, and four will do um, five meters um, north. So um, 
whether you're watching it or whatever, just pause the video there and, oh, yes, I'm going to actually give you a question. That will help. <laughs> um, so what I want you to do, can I, um, yeah, that's better. So the first thing I want to know is what, I'll do, I'll do A, what is the total distance traveled? too hard not a trick question and b um how far is he now from his um starting point okay so all right so total distance traveling would be just as i said earlier on sort of um with a mileometer you just add them together because your mileometer doesn't know what direction you're traveling so just 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5, sorry, 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 5. So, yeah, that would be 40. So um, distance travel would be 40. How far is he from his original point? In this case, we have to kind of, whoops, we have to um, draw it or at least draw it in our heads. Um, but let's, let's start off with a cross, label it as H for home. We're going to go um, 5 meters east, label that as 5. Then we're going to go from here, we're going to go, 10 meters south and then we're going to go 20 meters west now that's going to be five there and then another 15 over here so i'll label that as 20 and then we're going to go five meters north which is going to be half as high as that 10. my diagram is definitely not to scale so if you did this to scale um then you would basically um you you would just then measure from from this this distance here now, I haven't used the word displacement. If I said, what is the displacement? Then the direction would be from the start to the finish. So the arrow would be um, going to, to the bottom left, like that. That would be the displacement. Um, so what? So let, how would we do it accurately in a way that, um, uh, that we don't need to use we don't need. We don't need to measure it now. The specification wants you to use the scale drawing methods, but um, if you wanted to check your answer, or if they do change it, then um, you can use Pythagoras. So we really just want to work out what is the length and height of that. Well, because that's five and that's ten, then that must be five there, and we've taken off a of five there, so that's fifteen there. So we're just going to say it's fifteen squared plus five squared all square rooted is what the displacement is. Um, so, so look, unless I've done this wrong, let me just double check it. I said five east, 10 south, 20 west, five north. So I've trimmed off that five from there to make the base 15 of the, the base of the triangle 15. And that's five there. So that should be right. So I'll square rooted to work out the hypotenuse um, it works out to be um, 5 root 10, which is about 15.8 um, metres. So, so you can use Pythagoras um, to solve that. Um, but the reason why you use displacement is because we can see with displacement why you're going to take these because these are all vectors here. You're going to take these vectors and you're going to join them head to tail each time. And um, so, in other words, uh, let's, let's use that color here. So it's going this way, then it's going that way, then it's going that way, and then it's going that way. Um, and that's, that is clearly how you would add um, displacement vectors but the point is, this is how you add all vectors. Every vector is added in the same way, just like we just did with the forces. And that is clearly how you do it with um, displacement. Well, let's just look at one more, which is a bit weird. That's how you add forces. That's how you add displacement. Now let's think of a situation in which you would add velocities. So we're going to add two velocities at right angle to each other. How would How could this happen? Well, if you've got a train, this is my favorite example, you've got a train 
moving that way at five meters per second north. And on this train, you've got a remote control car moving that direction at two meters per second. Now, if that train didn't have a roof and there was a helicopter flying, hovering above it, it will say, how fast did they see this, um, this little remote control car moving and in what direction? What you would do is you, would, you can see, you can sort of visualize that the direction is going to be is kind of towards the top right. So it would kind of be like, like that, wouldn't it? We can see it's going to be something like that. We use the same method as before. Um, so it's going to be that the size of that arrow is going to be just like a right angle triangle. It's going to be the square root of five squared plus two squared. So the square root of 25 plus four, the square root of 29, um, which is square root of 29 is, oh, it's a five point, five point three. Well, let's say 5.4. So, so I kind of flew through some examples there on how to add different um, different vectors of different size, uh, different types of vectors. You could keep on th imagining how you could add other types of vectors as well, but um, that gives you an overview.